Dan Ingram, one of the great players from this Baldwin team, is going to represent the team up here. And uh, first, some people may not know how American Legion teams are formed, Dan. Tell us what high schools made up the Baldwin team. Uh, very good start, um, but i got to tell you real quick, though. Sorry, i got a microphone. Um, Forty-two years ago, this was the last time that we actually sat down to do this. Forty-two years ago in Memphis, that's a long time ago. Now, it's just me, you, and 800, 900 of our closest friends. And I'm thrilled to be here. Absolutely thrilled. And you look really good, by the way. You got the hair. Got the hair going on. Still. See, Ron. It's not, anyway. as, it's not as long as it used to be, though. <laughs> he does look good. Anyway, I'm sorry. The question was the question about was the. was what high schools <laughs> made up the Baldwin team. Okay. Um, interesting question. Um, in, in the state of Missouri, uh, the rule was that most, most of the Legion teams would use usually the, the players that come from three high schools, two or three or four high schools. And we found out as we got going uh, the, the, from the other states or the teams we played, a lot of the teams that we played were literally select all-star teams. One in particular we wound up playing in the, uh, the final game was from Memphis. It wasn't like Germantown or, you know, suburb. It was Memphis. Memphis is like St. Louis. So it was the all-star team from Memphis that we played in Memphis before their home crowd. So it was kind of a big deal. The high schools that we, cho that we, that we chose from were uh, Priory, and I'm not sure they had a baseball team, uh, CBC before CBC became kind of the powerhouse that they are now. I know they've got good baseball now. And then Lafayette. And for those uh, that were around St. Louis back in the early 70s, you probably remember Lafayette High School uh, that won three straight state high school baseball championships. So the truth was it didn't really make any difference what other high school team we were going to, pro for the most part, be you know, the players on that team. There was one exception. There was 15 kids in the team. 14 were from Lafayette, and Tommy Gallagher was our catcher from CBC, best catcher in St. Louis. Season coming to a climax. Springfield Hillcrest was your rival you couldn't get over, and they uh, beat you in the state finals twice in a row. So this was your big chance, your, your last chance. Nails on a chalkboard, Springfield Hillcrest, and I know they're still around. They had really very good baseball at the time. They had a tremendous program. The way the year started, um, to get to that point, we almost, and I didn't know this until I got the old, dusted off the old scrapbook, started looking at them, we almost didn't win the league, the, the South Division of the league that year to get any, to even, to get into the playoffs. We won the very last game last weekend and beat Fenton. We had to come back from being down five to one in the eighth inning just to win the league by a game we went on. We, we beat the North County team, the districts, the, the uh, uh, Eastern Zone Tournament, you know, unscathed, got through it, knowing that the big prize for us was to play Springfield Hillcrest, the nemesis, for the third year in a row. So here we go. So in 1970, we win the first game. They win the second game, and they won the third game. That was 1970, very frustrating for everybody. Actually, a completely different team than we had. 71, same thing. Unscathed, get through, play Springfield Hillcrest. We win the first game, they win the second game, and they win the third and final game for two years in a row. So we get a, our, our third crack at them in 1972. Go through it, sure enough, I pitched the first game, best game I've ever pitched in my life. Beat them, we beat them, and, and I came in relief in the first inning with two outs to beat them, and th I think the, the star pitcher, Bobby Dethridge, beat them two to one, and when Mike Murphy came out with a sore arm in 10 innings. So that was the first game. Second game, they won. I don't even remember what the score was. It was fairly close. So you can imagine what everybody was thinking, except for the players and the coaches. Every fan in Baldwin, with probably a few exceptions, just knew we were going to lose the third game again. But we knew we weren't going to. So we actually won the game fairly easily. And that we won it 5-3. to three. I'm telling you what, that energized us like you can't believe to get us to the next round, and we just, we absolutely were on fire. We went to Hastings, Nebraska, beat those teams pretty bad. Our first win in Hastings, we beat a team, the state champion, 20 to nothing. So we were really supercharged. Won that handily and then wound up in Memphis. And tell me, the, the leader of this team, and he's here tonight, uh, Billy Bullock, was he a fiery guy? Uh, 
Billy was a very fiery guy. We had three great coaches. Billy was one of them. Um, Billy Bowyernack Bullock, where are you? Um, he's, he's uh, I know he's here, but anyway, he had, that, he had that saying, and everybody in the city of Baldwin knew Billy Bullock. He was a very fiery, he was the one coach. We had Red Lore, Chief Red Lore, who was the Baldwin for those that, a lot of you guys probably remember. Chief Lore was the, the police chief of the city of Baldwin. Tell me as an 18-year-old kid, that didn't come in handy. The police chief. We had uh, Bob Umfleet, and all three of our coaches were ex-professional baseball players. We had the best coaches going, including Billy Bullock. Bob Umfleet was a pitching coach, but Billy Bullock was the one coach. He was kind of the enforcer. Nice guy, but he'd get this look in his face. If you ever upset him, you knew you were in trouble. And I remember playing in Kirkwood early that same year, and I can remember three straight times there was, with an 0-2 count, I gave up a hit. You know, I was young, and I, I needed a little direction. So out comes the pitching coach and Billy Bullock. And he walks up to the mound, and I'm standing a little frustrated because I'm thinking, I just gave up three hits. That's not good. So I'm thinking he's, you know, he's going to question me, how you feeling? I'm going to take you out. He looks at me, and he says, you see that runner on third base? He said, what was the count? When that guy got the hit, I said 0-2. He said, uh, second base, same thing, 0-2. First base, 0-2. He said, does that tell you anything? He says, the next time that you throw a strike with an 0-2 pitch, you are out of here. And trust me, I never forgot that. <laughs> never threw another 0-2 strike. Let's just have the uh, members of the Baldwin team, since they haven't been applauded in 40 years. Yay! Uh, the guys who are here stand up from the team and uh, we'll welcome you all into the St. Louis Sports Hall of Fame. <laughs> 